Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to talk about the cameras on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. Now this is purely just photo samples and discussion about the camera as I've been using it. So I'm going to cover video stuff when I do my full review here or my kind of full review because this is not the US model and from what I know the software for the camera is still not like 100% and I got that from watching other reviewers because they've been sent review units like Mr. Mobile and them. They said that the software was still pre-production. And it's really weird to discuss it being pre-production software when the phone has already been released in some regions or at least part of Asia and it still hasn't launched yet in the UK and Europe and it's still going to be even further down the road for the US. So I'm not really sure where the camera is at right now because of the different stage launches and just what I've heard. So I'm hoping that the camera will improve and there are moments when you take photos with this the cameras on this phone where i think it looks fantastic i love the natural tone i love that it's not oversaturated i love the complexity especially with the zoom the continuous zoom with the optical lens is super super nice and we'll talk about that in this video also and i'll show you some of the photos that i have taken and also there were some people who are concerned about overheating it hasn't overheated on me but it does definitely get warm when you're using 4k video continuously for a little while. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the samples. So when you look at this phone, you're getting three 12 megapixel cameras, which is pretty common now. You get a 12 megapixel wide angle, which is your traditional shooter, dual pixel phase detection, autofocus, optical image stabilization, the whole nine yards. And you get a 12 megapixel telephoto with the continuous zoom. It's got two different focal lengths, 85 millimeters and 125 millimeters. And it's really nice because you can really do that cool optical zoom in. There's two different options on it. And it's just really cool. And you can see right here, like this illustration, I was outside, there was a flag I wanted to take a picture of because you can use a regular zoom on the normal lens, but it's not gonna give you that optical clarity, the natural looking lens that you get with a true telephoto zoom as opposed to a digital zoom or a combination thereof. So I think it's really cool you can do that and it adds a whole nother element to where you can reach out and touch something. And I think maybe this might be the next frontier when it comes to being able to use these phones because you kind of got everything locked down now. You get a regular camera, you get an ultra wide, and you get a telephoto, bam, that's pretty much it. And sometimes you can do the macro and some of that stuff with other phones with the telescopic, the way that they do it, or maybe it's the ultra wide, I can't remember, but they use the lens and it's a dual purpose and they can get the macro shots with it, which works pretty good. A dedicated macro I still think is better. I also like the telescopic macros that some of the Chinese market phones are putting in them. But overall, I think that the camera setup is pretty good. If you're not a photo enthusiast, though, this is definitely not the phone or camera for you. Now, I do love the phone, and I do like taking photos. I'm more of a point-and-shoot kind of guy when it comes to snapping photos with my phone, though. And that's why I'm a big fan of, like, the Pixel 6 Pro, the Pixel 6, the S22 Ultra, the iPhone 13, 13 Pro, whatever. There are so many different phones that do the photography stuff so well. And then they've got these AI processors, AI cores. They're doing computational photography. And they're making these shots look just so amazing. It's something that's really cool. The way that Sony does it is it tries to do it the old school traditional way with brute force strength lenses and telephoto and optical magic. It's, it's one of those things where you can take amazing photos and you can adjust the ISO, you can adjust the focal length, you can adjust the exposure, you can adjust basically everything. When you look at this camera menu that's on here, there are so many different modes with the Sony camera app. And you can start off, it starts off default as basic mode. And you've got auto, you've got manual mode. You've got so many different things in here. And you can see here on the screen, you can adjust basically everything that's on here. And you can get varying degrees of what you can adjust based off of whether you use basic mode, auto mode, programmed auto mode, manual exposure, shutter speed priority. If you're into manual, like if you're into actually using a camera, this is probably the closest thing that you're going to get inside of a smartphone. And this is the first time I've used one, especially with this continuous zoom with the optical lens. It really does feel kind of like you're popping different lenses on and off when you're using it. And I really like the way that that translates over to the phone and the phone experience. And I think as they optimize it some more, it's going to get better. There are definitely areas where it just doesn't seem to capture or handle the light well. And the photos look dark. And that's not something that I'm too crazy about. Low light is not as good as you get with the iPhone, the S22 Ultra, because a lot of that stuff is computational photography. It's using stuff with the computer, the chip inside the phone to 
artificially make it look better. And that's cool. You get some cool stuff. When it comes to a just normal camera lens, though, it makes it much more difficult. But when you can adjust things like the shutter and the ISO and all that, then you can get better low light photos with a natural lens. So there's stuff you can do, but it's not point and click. And then you get the best photo possible. That's just, and there's no top shot. There's none of that crazy stuff that the other phones do. So it's a give and take relationship when it comes to this phone and the camera setup. Also, the selfie camera is better. I do wish it had 4K 60 on the video, which kind of irks me. It's only 4K 30, but it is improved over the last go around with the Xperia 1 Mark III. The 12 megapixel selfie camera is definitely, definitely, definitely better. It is a much appreciated upgrade over the Xperia 1 Mark III and its predecessors. So I'm glad they changed that out. New lens, new sensor, all that stuff. But it's still not amazing. It's good, but it's not amazing. And there are some amazing selfies out there. The selfie camera on the S22 Ultra is probably the best I've ever seen. And it's fantastic. And then there, there are offsets though. Like you look at the iPhone 13 Pro and it still can't handle HDR appropriately. And if you get too much natural light or you're outside, it makes you look like you have jaundice and your liver's failing. So... It's very frustrating to, to get that orange appearance when you know you don't look like that. Apple knows you don't look like that, but they refuse to fix it. Or then when you're using the iPhone, if you use it at nighttime or if there's any bright light sources, you get horrible lens flare. Horrible, horrible. This one, not a whole lot of lens flare that I've noticed at all, if any. So they've done a good job with the design, with the lenses, with the hardware that's in here. I think that it's very complimentary, but it takes somebody who's good at taking photos to bring out the beauty and the best that you can get out of this camera. But it's also a learning experience. And it's also nice because you have full control over it. For instance, I wanted to take a picture of the moon. I went outside and I was able to adjust it. The shutter speed, the ISO, the, all that good stuff. And I could actually take a picture of the moon as opposed to using an iPhone. And it looks like a distorted glowing orb in the sky, you know? So there are certainly trade-offs. Every single phone and every single phone camera has its strengths, has its weaknesses, and has different things to compete with. This one, I hope that they continue to get better with the software. I wish that they would bring some computational photography elements into this because if they use some of that computer hardware under this under the hood, because it's got the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, which is amazing, and it's really designed a big upgrade over the Snapdragon 888 with a huge emphasis on artificial intelligence and machine learning, which is what they use to make these Phone, these photos look more enhanced. So I think there's room to grow here. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see what happens once we get the official UK launch and also the US launch to see if there's some significant improvement with the camera. That would be nice. But so far, so good. I like it. Definitely, this is not a point and shoot camera. The point and shoot is actually kind of disappointing sometimes. And the photos don't always look good, which you can see here. Sometimes you get a good one. Sometimes you don't. You got to fiddle with it. And if you don't know what you're doing with manual mode, it's going to frustrate you even more because you're going to try and change stuff and you don't know what you're doing. And then it's going to look even worse than the auto mode did. So you could get this this phone and pick it up and think, okay, this takes good photos. And you could also get it and like, wow, this takes terrible photos. Why did I pay $15.99 in the US, which is going to be what the price is. I paid about $12.99 for mine, which I feel pretty comfortable with because phones are just so expensive nowadays. This is kind of a niche hardware component. This is really kind of a very small target audience for the Xperia 1 Mark IV. So I don't mind paying that much because I plan on keeping it and using it for the year. But definitely, if you just want a flagship phone, you pick it up, you point and you shoot and all that stuff, there's other phones that are going to serve you a lot better at a lot lower price. I mean, you can even pick up the Pixel 6 Pro right now during the Father's Day sale for $799, which is $100 bucks off. So you look at the US market and you could pre-order and get the earbuds, the XM4s, you can get that for $15.99 in the, in the United States, or you can pay $7.99 and get a Pixel 6 Pro. And then I think for most people, the Pixel 6 Pro is going to be a significantly better photo experience for somebody who just wants to press the button and take photos, as opposed to spending almost twice as much money, basically, and getting this. So you really got to look at what's available, what the market conditions are, what you're looking for, and are you willing to put in the time and the energy and learn how to use the cameras on here so you can get those better shots in more different environments? So there are some trade-offs, but I do think it's better than the Xperia 1 Mark III. And so far, I've been enjoying it. Also, just to address the overheating, I had several people that talked about it and discussed it or asked comments about it. I did a 15-minute continuous 4K 60 video earlier, and it didn't overheat, which is good. I also wasn't outside, of course, having 
90 degree weather outside as opposed to 70 degree inside might influence that some. I'm going to mess around with it some more because I hadn't heard anything until this evening, so I tested it. It does get warm. It doesn't get as warm as the Pixel 6 or the 6 Pro, so I think that's probably going to be all right, but we'll just have to see. I think that's probably not too big of an issue, though, so need more testing. At this point, though, that's my thoughts and feels on the camera set up on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please go down to the comment section and I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.